and therefore, uh, you know, these terrorist groups have a defense to some of these terrorism trials. Maybe I am. Maybe I can be locked up indefinitely. And this is a gross uh, violation of our constitutional rights. Uh, it doesn't get any more clear, you know, that you're entitled to due process uh, under the law. You're entitled to a speedy trial. And this doesn't even allow you a speedy trial. It doesn't allow you any trial at all. And they're not even required to tell your family if they've taken you or anything. It's a gross violation of law. It's totally unconstitutional. It's all about power. And what's telling is that I believe 93 out of 100 senators voted for, for this law. Something like that, like 93%. And I have to ask, so what incident could unite them so much that they would pass this clearly unconstitutional law? And to me, the answer is obvious. The answer is that they passed this law not to deal with crazy Islamic Muslim terrorists, but to be able to label anyone in the United States a terrorist for uh, to deal with them and just take them off the streets during the coming global unrest that will happen here in the U.S., which I think is inevitable and will happen here very soon. The, uh, I expect a total economic collapse in the U.S. very shortly, and then we're going to have all kinds of chaos here, and the government passed this law not to deal with the terrorists, but to arrest U.S. citizens and take them off without having to do a trial or give any justification. I think that's why you saw 93 senators out of 100 voting for it. I was previously going to sue the government uh, over the underwear bomber attack for intentional infliction of emotional distress, and I've recently decided not to. And actually, the statute of limitations expired on Christmas Day, 2011. So uh, even if I wanted to change my mind now, I couldn't. But I wanted to give the reasons why I've decided not to sue. And there are basically three reasons. One, the, in uh, late 2011, the government came out with a bipartisan report called uh, report on fiscal responsibility or something like that. But anyway, what this was is a bipartisan panel appointed by Obama to study the future of the economy. And every member on the panel indicated that the U.S. government would collapse economically in no longer than 24 months. And this was written at, at the, in late 2011. So that puts us in late 2013. Uh, sometimes lawsuits can take several years, and this would be one that could possibly take several years. And uh, I've decided it would be better off to take the time we have left, which is now maybe a year and a half, and instead of me spending a great deal of amount of time in this case, but uh, to not put it into that, but to put it into uh, making more money and preparing and saving as much money as I can to leave the country as Lori and I plan to leave the country uh, by late two, 2013, probably, by the end of 2013. So that's one of the reasons. Number two uh, was the NDAA, and not due to intimidation. I'm not really concerned about the government locking me up, but my thinking was more along the lines of that the citizens of the United States didn't even care that this NDAA went through. There should be uh, protests all over the streets, you know, uh, the government's allowed to lock you up indefinitely without a trial. It seems like no one even cares about this. You know, they care more about, uh, you know, whatever, any topic. You know, using losing union benefits in Wisconsin, for example. You see picketing at the, the governor's mansion in Wisconsin. I mean, literally every person in the U.S. should be out picketing or doing whatever in the streets over the San Diego. There's almost nothing. So to me, that was a sign that do people of the U.S. really care if I would prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the underwear bomber case was a false flag event? And the answer to me was clearly no. So those two things, as well as number three, which was that every time I went to work on this case, I found that I had to put a great deal more time into it than I thought and that this case would take probably, if not hundreds of hours of my time, thousands of hours of my time, and I'm already very busy as it is, and I decided that uh, 
you know, with myself leaving the country at the end of next year that I wasn't going to commit that kind of time um, into something that people don't really care about. So that's, those are the reasons that I decided to not file the case, not do an intimidation or being paid off or anything like that. Yeah, Abdul Mutalab hasn't been sentenced yet. He's actually being sentenced uh, two days from now, February the 16th. And uh, any passenger on the flight it is allowed to make a victim impact statement telling how this matter has affected their, li their life or lives. And uh, I'll be giving a victim impact statement. Unfortunately, Judge Edmonds has limited each passenger to only five minutes, so it'll be pretty limited. Um, but I will be appearing Thursday and giving a victim impact statement. Obviously, I'm going to talk about what I have been all along, which is that I think the media has been lying about this case. You know, what we're being shown in court isn't really what happened, and that this was a government set up with an intentionally defective bomb. Now, I have to be really careful how I word things because I'm still a practicing attorney, and I actually practice in the same court on a weekly basis, so... Uh, I have to kind of restrict what I say to not get me in trouble with the state bar, but it'll be something along those lines. I'll have a pre-prepared statement. What made me come forward is that, one, I was very irritated that I almost lost my life on Christmas Day 2009. And, you know, I'm very irritated over who is behind it, U.S. government, for sure, my own government. And I thought it was important that I come out and talk about it. You know, I'm used to talking in public. I do it on a daily basis at court. I'm not you. Um, I have no problem with people talking badly about me. They do that all the time. You know, the other side or whoever. I have no problem getting yelled at. So really, I have a pretty thick skin for people talking badly about me. And as far as intimidation, I don't really care. What is the government going to do to me? It's not like they can cost me, uh, you know, my employment. It's not like they're more credible than I am. It's not like they have more evidence behind them in this case than I do. And, you know, frankly, I'm just not intimidated by them at all. I think it's important that we all come out and talk about it. If you do nothing and you're intimidated by the government and don't come out and speak about it, you're just going to encourage more of this behavior. I think at the very least, I've uh, awakened a lot of people, people that normally wouldn't think like this, and I've convinced them that my version of the events are in fact correct. So I encourage you to do the same that I have and eventually enough people will be convinced that US government is entirely corrupt and should be replaced. You know, the next question is how do we fix the problems here? And I, I think people that think we're gonna do this by vote, by voting out people and putting in, you know, people that will honor the constitution and protect the rights of U.S. citizens, I, th I think you're being naive. I think this is a, an entire, entirely corrupt organization running things in the U.S. now, uh, controlled by greed and money. They're not going to willingly give that up voluntarily, so I, th I don't think things are going to change here uh, by voting, and I think you can see that with the primaries going on now and Ron Paul, the guy, you know, even though a lot of people are holding out their hopes for him, he has no chance the media is against him, um, and you know there's been allegations of vote rigging in a couple of the states already, and it's just not going to happen. He's not going to be elected, and that's the sort of thing you'll see in any with any candidate that might try and change things. That's what you're going to get, and it's just not going to happen. So I don't think things are going to change. They're going to get worse and worse and worse until there's total uh, economic and political collapse here, and this becomes a total. Uh, dictatorship? I don't know. It, it, you're going to see a government collapse very soon, though, and it's only going to change due to the people rising up. And, and I'm not talking about just blogs or watching shows or whatever, but physically going out and doing things and changing things. Not through elections. Since this happened, uh, you know, a couple years ago, Christmas 2009, I've really changed my belief in, in regards to anything that has to do with the government. Uh, you know, I was just a normal citizen before that. I didn't really have any beliefs that the government was as extreme it is and uh, so willing to violate constitutional rights and stage false flag attacks and put out propaganda. 
I was just a regular person. And since this happened, and you can see it from some of my early videos or writings that I made, that I really questioned what happened here. I didn't come to conclusions right away, but it's my theory on what has happened has been developed over a couple years looking at all the evidence. So um, where I'm at at this point is that I don't believe the government in anything. I don't trust them at all. I think they have some sort of an alternative agenda which has to do with taking rights away of Americans. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but it's definitely there. And it's not for the reasons they're saying to protect you from terrorism, but it's due to alternative reasons. Uh, you know, maybe the coming economic collapse, or maybe to mask that the government wants to take over the world. Uh, I don't know, but you can see pretty obvious acceleration of the loss of our constitutional rights. And, you know, I, I've really looked into the, these things a lot more since Christmas Day 2009 and again I don't trust the government at all um, and I don't think they're working in the best interests of the US citizens. Info Warriors, Alex Jones here announcing